good evening um i couldn't uh, I, I i i couldn't i've been so busy today and um uh, uh i was running around i couldn't even uh, cut my hair i can see the way my hair is coming out i'm looking like a, a rebel leader but anyway i'm not a rebel leader i'm just um uh, a humble citizen uh, who is trying to do uh, his level best uh, in this country uh, to help the country to contribute to the well-being of this country I always say I come from a very poor background a very very poor background and um, uh, I know what poverty is I know how bad it is uh, to to suffer so i'm just trying to contribute to do my bit to contribute to help uh those especially those who are under privileged now i know uh, today a lot of people um will say what i'm going to say it is out of bitterness it is because I was put in the cells and this is why uh, I, I'll, I'll be talking uh, or whatever I will say, others will, cons will take it from a point of view of bitterness. I want to tell you, I really want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my heart, I do, I do not uh, hold a grudge. I don't hold a grudge. I don't hold a grudge. I am not bitter. I forgive all those that uh, were involved in incarcerating me for eight days. I forgive them. I don't think I did anything wrong. And this is why I placed myself on record in court that I have not committed, I have not committed any crime. I am not guilty. And uh, I am very ready uh, to defend myself and um, uh, I'll do everything. I'll do everything at my disposal to uh, defend myself because I did not, I did not uh, defend President Edgar Lungo. I didn't. What I said is nothing but the truth nothing but the truth and i'm standing by it i will be able to prove it in that court that i didn't lie that i didn't defame president edgar chagua lungo i didn't defame him what i said is the truth now having said that having said that uh, that i I do not hold, I do not harbor any hatred or bitterness against anyone. Having said that, allow me a few moments to uh, thank the people that uh, stood by me during those uh, difficult times. Uh, number one, I want to really uh, express my gratitude to my wife. Uh, uh, believe me, I am I'm lost of words for my wife. I'm lost of words for my wife because those of you who have followed me from the time that I knew my wife, she refused uh, that she don't want she doesn't want to marry somebody who is in politics. And one of the reasons that she she has been against politics it's this kind of thing where. You know, at one point or the other, somebody is uh, picked up and locked up. Um, so uh, I, it took it took a lot. It took a lot of uh, intervention. Thank you, my wife. I'm just saying thank you for what you did for me. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah. So, uh, we are coming from, I'm coming from that background where, you know, my wife refused to marry me because I was involved in politics. It had to take a lot of people coming in, her friends, and some people to convince her, uh, you know, to marry me as a politician. And now, like she used to predict, you know, we are just almost two years into our marriage. You know, we'll be turning two years in a few um, in a few months. Two years into our marriage, I'm arrested, thrown in the cells, and she was hopeless. She she didn't know she didn't even know what to do. She didn't even know who to talk to. And uh, she keeps lamenting. One thing that she keeps lamenting, my wife says, you know, sometimes she 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 she's joking. She says, you know. You, you claim to have so many friends, but there you were in difficulty times. None of those friends of yours that you call your friends were available. Not even, you know, just giving me a phone call or just checking up on me. They, 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 they just vanished. And particularly she, she has been mentioning a number of people in PF, a number of people in PF who I have introduced her to, that to say, this is my friend, this is my friend. And yet, all these people that have called friends, they were not there when I was in difficulties. And she keeps talking about this. She keeps talking about this. I'm sorry to say that even you on social media, she has been saying, even you have got so many followers, so many followers, but how many of them turned up for you when you were in difficulties? At one point, I must confess, I mean, when I was arrested, we didn't even have money. We didn't even have money. She even struggled just to get fuel to come and see me in the cells. However, there were a few people that were there for me. There were a few people that were there for me. But before I come to that, particularly one of the people that uh, uh, my wife is so disappointed with, and even myself, is the Honorable Campiongo. Stephen Campiongo, I take him as my brother. I take him as my friend. I, I am greatly disappointed. I am greatly disappointed uh, with uh, Stephen Campiongo. I don't know how much he was involved in this. I don't know how much he was involved in this. I don't know. But whatever the case, be it politics, be it the job, you know, there must be a time when, you know, you, you transcend all these issues and look at uh, the other person as a friend, as a brother, regardless of your position. I know he can say, he was in a position that it was difficult for him and so on and so forth. But surely, surely, I expected better from Honorable Campiongo. I expected better from Honorable Campiongo. You know, I came back, when I came out, my wife even showed me a text message that she sent to Honorable Campiongo and remained quiet. I am not bitter. I am not bitter. I'm simply expressing myself. I'm simply expressing myself. I'm not bitter. There are other people also, especially in the PF. PF are my friends. PF are my friends. These are people, especially some of them, I mean, I work with them. I work with them. They wake me up in the night. They wake me up in the night. Especially these senior government officials in PF, none of them would say, I called Chilifatari and he never answered. I do wake up, even at 03, 01, I do wake up. They send me to go out and do things in the thickest of the night. In the thickest of the night, they wake me up. Chilifatari, do this. Sometimes I also wake up in the night at dawn. 
to defend the PF, to defend the PF, to defend President Ed Galungu. But these are my friends who turned against me, arrested me, threw me inside for having had done nothing. They know I did nothing. I did nothing and I'm daring them. I'm daring them. Let them go ahead with this case. Let us go. Let's see the end of this case. And let's see who is being truthful in this matter. Let's see who is being truthful. I don't want to go into the nitty gritties of this case. I don't want because tomorrow they will come and uh, charge me uh, for contempt. I am just telling them that I am ready for this case. I am really ready for this case. The Zambian people who will hear of what has been going on, the Zambian people will hear and they will judge if indeed I've just been talking from without. I've not been talking from without. I speak the truth. I say things as they are. You guys, you have disappointed me. And you can't blame me today because I know some people, uh, you know, even before, no, Tehali, uh, Tehali changes, Tehali changes, go post. Honestly, my brothers and sisters, how can you blame me today? Can you blame me today? Who has abrogated the, 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 the relationship that we had? Is it me or it's yourselves? Is it me or it's yourselves? Can you blame me if I come out here and speak, sp spill out some of these things? Can you blame me? Are you going to say Tayali doesn't have confidentiality? Honestly, what is more important? The human rights of a person and your confidentiality. You expect me to hide your iniquities. You expect me to hide the wrong things you do. And yet, you, you don't have regard for me. You don't have regard for me. You can talk about some people uh, on social media think Chirifatayali is bankrolled by PF. Yes, I always say that the PF are my friends. And time and again, I do have a number of people giving you a, 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 a five pin there, giving you a three pin there. When you are stranded, somebody giving you a ten pin. Yes, I do receive uh, that kind of money. But what is that, those little monies that you give me compared to the wealth that you have amassed? What is that little wealth? What is that compared to the watch and, and, you, and, you, and you think I don't see? I see. I see. But I look away because you are my friends and I just like, ah, it's okay. It's okay. So what I'm saying is that you can't say, no, we look after Tayali, we do this, this, this. I can challenge you. I can challenge you. Anyone can come out tomorrow. You can come out and say, me, I gave Tayali so much. Me, I gave Tayali so much. You say it. I struggle to, to, to look after my family. I struggle to look after my family. And mostly when I'm stranded, I come to you. That's when I come to you. And even when I come to you, you only give me a piece of bread for me to survive the next day. I buried my grandmother. My grandmother was sick in hospital of COVID-19 until she died. I buried my grandmother alone. You, my so-called friends, were nowhere. I had a difficult time. I had a difficult time. Thanks to a few of you I want to appreciate that young man, you know, who gave me two buses. The only help I got from PF during the funeral of my, of my, my grandmother was two buses, two mean buses from uh, Millennium. Uh, is it Millennium Station? Yeah. Two buses from, you know, that association at Millennium. That is the only help I got. 
but I was very stranded. I struggled. Thank God, somewhere, somehow, I managed. So, you guys, you guys, my PF, you have not been really there for me. And on top of that, you even come and incarcerate me for seven, for eight days. You incarcerate me. You wanted to inflict pain on me. You wanted to torture me. You wanted to inflict pain on my family. On my mother, my poor mother, she kept on crying. Every day and night, she was crying. My children were lost. What has daddy done that he's in prison? Surely, my friends, surely, my PF, surely, my Edgar Lungu, is this the way you can treat a person? Is this the way you can treat your friend? Is this the way you can treat somebody that has been working with you? Yes, I'm the one that came to President Edgar Lungu. I went to President Edgar Lungu and asked President Edgar Lungu to help me, that I work with him and he helps me. The response was good. But what was done, what has been done, is not what I expected. It's not what I expected. And I want to tell some of you who think that when you move into PF, then things become better. There are very few. There are very few, especially you young people. I'm sure some of you who have already crossed into PF, living whichever political party, who have gone into PF, I'm sure you are already seeing. I'm sure you already you have already felt that it is not as greener as we see it from outside. It is not. Yes, we see so much money being being tossed, being thrown around. But mostly it is just for sure for people to see. And I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that. I'll talk about these donations. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about that. Please bear with me. I need to express myself because really I am not happy with what has happened to me. I'm not happy. And you can't blame me. You can't blame me that Tayali has turned against us. You can't blame me. Me, I have saved you diligently. I've saved you diligently. I've committed myself, Kampiongo, you know very well. We have achieved things. We have succeeded on a number of things. I'm not going to be careless to just throw things here and there. But keep on pushing me. Take me to court. I will speak about these things. And you will not blame me of not being uh, a person that keeps secrets. Because you have started it. You have started. You are the ones who have started this. I haven't done anything wrong. I didn't. What I said is true. And you know it. How do you arrest me and throw me inside? And okay, fine. Even if. Even if I was wrong. As a person that is close to you. Why didn't you call me? Let's take it. Yes, I, I was wrong. Let's take it. I was wrong. Why couldn't you call me and sit me down? Why couldn't you do that? You are my friends, Kampiongo. You are my friends. Chris Zumani Zimba. You are a young man. You are a young man new on the job. Why couldn't you call me and talk to me the way you call me when you want me to do something? When you want me to do something, you call me at any time. This time around, when you realize that I did something wrong, according to you, why didn't you call me? Why couldn't you call me and tell me, Tayali, look, what you are doing here is wrong. You can't say this. I am a very flexible person. I do listen to others. And if indeed I was wrong, I would have come back and apologized. But you decided to inflict pain on me, to torture me. My brothers and sisters, that is not good. What you did was very bad. What you did was very, very bad. 
And I'm sorry. I can never trust you. I can never trust you. I actually feel a fool. I watched Sia One talk about me to say, Tayali, I used to tell you that they'll use you like tissue and throw you. I almost felt like crying. I felt like crying when I heard Sia One talking like that. Because somehow, I mean, it has come to pass. If there, if, if there is something that Sia One has prophesied and has come to pass, it is exactly that. That tayari you be you are being used like toilet tissue and you'll be thrown out. That's how I felt. That's how I feel even today. That's how I feel. The people that have saved, the people that have been with, they have used me and thrown me like a tissue. Because they don't need me. It's all right. It's all right. You don't need me. I'm going to the people. I'm going to the people. I'm going to ask people to be with me. And I'm asking you people to be with me. I know some of the things that I've done may have, uh, you, you may not have liked it, may have hurt you. I am saying sorry. I trusted wrong guys. I trusted wrong people. I trusted wrong leaders. I thought they were leaders, but I, I was wrong. Sia One, you were right. You were right. On this one, I must say you were right. I never expected this. I never expected this. At the time when I was really, you know, thinking that this is the best time, this is the time, because we were negotiating. We were negotiating. I was into a negotiation with the PF. During this election, how are we going to work? What will happen afterwards? These are the things that we were going through. This is the, this is the stage at which I was with the PF. So my relationship with the PF at this time when they, when they put me in the cells, I can tell you it was good. It was good. It was just last week. Last week, I was at State House. I was having a meeting with Chris Zumani Zimba. And we had a good meeting. We had a very good meeting. From there, I mean, I've, I was also with Kampiongo. Kampiongo, we talk so often. I hear him on radio. I call him. After the radio, after the, the interview, we interact. He called me, can you do this? I do it. I am a guy that is always available there. But you did this to me, honestly. Anyway. Too much of lamentations. Too much of lamentations. Let me move on. Let me move on from those lamentations. Um, let me thank the people that really came to see me. I am so grateful uh, to the civil society. You know, um, Action Aid and all other civil societies, Pamela, um, you know, uh, uh, everybody that is in the civil society that sent people to come and see me. I am so grateful. You know, I've already spoken about my wife. I'm very grateful. Uh, my children, you know, they were quite strong. I, 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 I thank my, my children for being so strong. For the first time, they came to see the sales. They came to see me behind bars. I am so grateful to, 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 to my children. My mother, you know, the moment she heard I was incarcerated, she left uh, the farm and she came to be with the... Um, uh, my wife and, and the family here. She's still here. Uh, she'll be going uh, probably over the weekend. She'll be going probably probably over the weekend. I'm very grateful. Um, so the civil society, thank you very much. Surprise, surprise. My elder brother, Simon Mwewal Len, also came to see me. I think sometimes he... You know, you need these difficulties to appreciate, uh, you know, the love that uh, is sometimes uh, <laughs> hidden in some people's hearts. Uh, you know, Simon Moore came to see me and uh, I, can, I, can, I could see, you know, though his face was, was strong and everything, you know, trying to, to put up a face, but I could see how broken he was. I could see sympathy 
in Simon Mwewa. And um, I say, Bakalamba, thank you very much. I really appreciate. He even bought us, uh, you know, uh, Ishima because in the cells there, most of the people who were there, the young people that were there, you know, people were not even bringing them food. So Simon Mwewa, when he came in, I asked him to buy us some Ishima. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, um, uh, Simon, Simon Mwewa. Um, Sia Wan, Sia Wan reached out to, to, to my wife and my wife is so grateful uh, to you, Sia Wan. She came to tell me to say, I, I didn't believe that I'm talking to Sia Wan. I, I almost asked for confirmation to say, are you the one? So Sia Wan, thank you very much for uh, standing uh, by me uh, with my family. Thank you very much, Sia Wan. Um, uh, Cosmo Mumba, eh? Cosmo Mumba, Dr. Cosmo Mumba. You are one of the bravest uh, PF um, associate that had the courage to come and see me. I, do, I don't take that lightly because I know you, Cosmo Mumba, we, 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 we work together, you know, in helping the PF. But you risked, you risked the relationship you came uh, to see me. I'm, I'm, I'm really humbled. I'm really humbled. I'm so grateful to you. Uh, I know these other PF, our, my fellow PF Candiles could not dare even come near the, that police station. And yet we, are, we almost work together eh? in the PF, uh, uh, PF, P, PF P, uh, Lungu and Co. Eh? We almost we work together, uh, but they couldn't. They couldn't. We plan these things together. Ah, you eh? so to la pita Peter Chanda, eh? Peter Chanda. I understand. I understand you, my brother. No, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not bitter. But uh, surely, uh, I mean, sometimes we need to be courageous. We need to be courageous. Eh? Nonetheless, it's okay. It's okay. Vamson tuomba wonse, eh? Muri company yaba lungu, omo tu tumomba wonse. But uh, when things were bad, you distance yourself. So many other people, but anyway, I am so grateful to, I'm so grateful to, uh, um, uh, to, to Cosmo Mumba. My elder brother, a uh, state council, Mutembonchito, doesn't like social media and he doesn't like to be mentioned on social media but please allow me to offer my gratitude publicly you came in i didn't pay engwe you spent almost three days three full days working on my case i saw on social media some people were saying hh uh, paid for the lawyers no i me i like to be honest i'm a transparent person i don't want to pretend i don't want to appear like i'm a big shot or whatever whatever i like to say things as they are state council mutembonchito came to offer his services without any way i never gave him one way this is just the truth but he worked like i had paid him millions he was being tossed around but he was there small uh, 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 junior police officers because they were given powers because they were given powers by state house they were behaving like they are big shots before a state council but he was so patient he respected all of them he was calm and he kept on encouraging me, be calm, be strong. And all he wanted is to make sure that my human rights are not trampled upon beyond. I am really, really grateful. And I apologize for mentioning you here. I really apologize. But I want to put this on record. I don't know if I'll be able to speak again tomorrow. I want to say this, that you 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 jesus christ was in you 
without you i don't know what these guys would have done to me i don't think i would be out here talking on social media i don't think you worked so hard together with the, those uh, uh beautiful young ladies that uh, were busy st that stood there at court to ensure that i get that bail it was not easy people were playing you know were being difficult because they no one wanted to to get the blame you know when instructions are coming from top it's very difficult for people to work so everyone is scared and this is the problem that we have at the moment that state house is infiltrating in the in the system and telling people what to do telling people what to do and can somebody dare me there that have defamed the president when i say this is the problem that we have that state house is busy instructing you know the police and the other investigative wings to do wrong things can somebody dare me on that i'll give you proof i'll give you proof because you may want to run away from this but remember you can't run away from me because i've been part of your system i am one of the operatives right in your system so don't even dispute don't even dispute i can give you evidence one two three four with deaths i can give you all the evidence they came here searching they were searching thinking that they will get some of this evidence my friends i'm not a fool i have all the evidence i have all the evidence i am not a fool when i'm dealing with you some of you who i didn't trust i made sure i have a backup on whatever we were doing so you dare me it is you who look a fool it is you who look a fool because i have evidence i have evidence and what you did you were busy from state house issuing commands that chteni fi chteni fi chteni fi those police officers they are all innocent those police officers at forced court for the forced quarters they are all innocent mr wioya i don't hold any grudge professor uh, hansongole as i call you i don't hold you any grudge all of you that were involved in this operation i don't hold any grudge against you i know you were just being sent i know you are being given instructions and even so far you know better about what i'm talking about it is really a pity Van so i had so much respect for you i am very disappointed very very disappointed i'm talking about Van so as at the force headquarters and what makes me feel bad is that and that office that high office you know director of you know investigation if it's being used like this i mean where are we where are we going where are we going it is not good that the police should be used in this manner and i and to some extent i blame myself to some extent i blame myself because i think i was i was i was watching it like a movie and enjoying it when it was happening to others until it happened to me i felt the pain so somehow i feel like this is karma i feel like this is karma god had to make me go through it and understand that this is wrong this is wrong so me i i know you can you can cheat to others table finde vepa fishing if i don't want to mention cases i will not mention cases at this point in time but if you dare me i'll go i'll tell you that case that case that case i'll tell you i'll tell you i'm very very disappointed i'm very very disappointed but i don't blame you uh, i don't blame the junior officers i don't blame all those young people all those junior police officers who were being used i don't blame them i don't blame them not at all 
So I am grateful basically what I'm uh, what I'm, uh, I'm on the stage of gratitudes gratitudes giving thanks to people that 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 helped me and I was talking about uh, um, uh, I've gone all that far because I am appreciating state council Mtembonchito for the job that he did for me I am also grateful to one other man that I will not mention in the media fraternity my wife still calls this man as a lawyer because at every point he was following everything. But media, you have really been my friend. I am so grateful to you, the media um, fraternity. You have really been there for me. I know, I mean, not many of you would come uh, came to see me, but this particular man, I'm not going to mention his name, he was like a ghost. He was following everything. If I was going to be killed, this man would have been the man to write the story. And I used this man as, you know, as a depository where I deposited some of the information that I had. I just say, just in case they kill me, because I have so much information against these people. I knew he would write the story. And he knows how to write the stories. So if you were thinking. Or if you think. That only me know about some of these things. You are joking. I'm not stupid. I quickly deposited the information. Because when you have information. When you have been working with people like this who are now desperate they can do anything desperate people can do anything so what you do you quickly release the information that you have deposit it deposit it into someone so that that person can hold on in case something happens to you there will be somebody to tell the story and i've got this this man who was like my shadow day and night he was watching that cell. He was watching that cell. That's why you don't understand. Like when you, each time you came and picked me, all of a sudden, the lawyer was, was, was coming because this person was, all, was watching that cell like a guardian angel. My brother, you are my guardian angel. I am so grateful. That is really being a journalist. I am grateful to you. I can't mention uh, your name. I won't mention your name because like I've said that I've deposited information in you. They might start following you as well. So I will not mention the name, but I am so grateful that you were that person that was watching whatever was happening around me. Even the day they took me to court, you were driving. They were driving at fast speed. But you were following. You followed until to the court. Until at the court. I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful. I, I, I've got nothing to pay you. Only God will, will pay you. So these are gratitudes I'm giving. Gratitudes to some of you on social media. Who were, you know, posting things here and there. Gratitude to um, Pilato who was also posting things here and there, I'm very, very grateful. I know some of you are waiting for me to mention uh, Mr. Haka in the Hichilema. I am grateful to Mr. Haka in the Hichilema. I'm grateful to Mr. Haka in the Hichilema. You know, he didn't say much, but just what he said, just mentioning my name there, meant a lot. And I'm grateful to you Mr. Haka Inde Ishlema, President of the UPND. I am grateful. I am grateful. I'll talk about you about you again uh, later on. I am, but at this point in time, I'm just saying thank you very much for everything that you did. Uh, you know, it's out of your little, little efforts here and there that my freedom was secured. I am very, very grateful. Now, having said all this, 
let me move to the next stage. What could have happened? How come PF picked me up? What could have happened? Let's ask ourselves that question. What could have happened? What really happened? Who was behind this? You see, the, first of all, the, the, the answer that I'll give you is that I, I really don't know. I really don't know what was the agenda of this. I am not sure. Up to now, I am not sure. I'm just speculating. Today, I spent most, most of the day trying to inquire, trying to find out. But everyone is running away. Everyone is running away. Is running away. They can't tell me, you know, what really happened. But I am thinking, I am thinking President Ed Galungu was very much aware of this. President Ed Galungu was very much aware of this. And uh, he must have signed that this should happen. I can't say President Ed Galungu didn't know. President Ed Galungu knew about this and he must have signed that yes this should happen to me but if our president did garungu i am disappointed i am disappointed me i'm a person that approached you to say i want to work with you how could you allow this to happen to me and expect me to look at you as a good president if you can do this to a person that you use, to a person that you know is like a one-man commando for you, is like a suicide commando for you, if you can do this to me, how can I say President Ed Galungu is a good leader? I, 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 I can't understand. And you know, this has happened to me, but it, no, it has happened also to other people. One of the weaknesses if you can allow me to point out, if you can allow me to point out, right, Galungu, is that you have allowed your presidency to be used by other people. You have allowed people to come to you and tell you things without confronting them. This has not only happened to me. This is a weakness. I know this is your type of leadership, but for me, this is a weakness because a leader, when he hears something, he should, he should be courageous enough to call a person and ask him or ask her, what is this I'm hearing? But from what I have observed in my interaction with State House, President Edgar Lungu does not confront people. President Lungu doesn't confront people. He listens from this one saying this, 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 and he acts on that without confronting people. A very different character with the, his predecessor, uh, late President Michael Sat. Late President Michael Sat, whenever you told him something, before you leave his office, he would call the person and ask. I said something over Sosala, which was written in the Daily Nation. President Sata called me to State House and the Paris Hotel. And he gave me his side of story. He was always confronting people. President Edgar Lungu does not confront people. He doesn't. And yet he likes to hear. He likes to hear things. This one comes telling this. This one comes telling this. He likes listening from people. Those who are around him, but he doesn't confront people. He doesn't confront those who are being discussed. And this is not good. The worst thing that has happened to President Ed Galungu is Chris Zumanizimba. Because Chris Zumanizimba, from what I have observed interacting with him, is a kachepa. He's more of a kachepa than a presidential advisor. He likes rumor mongering he has peddled operations against individuals out of we have heard we have heard we have heard we have heard i have said things 
I have attacked people based on rumor mongering. Now, at that level, Taufule Leva Kachepa yo. In that office as a presidential advisor, Taufule Leva Kachepa yo. President uh, uh, Chris Zuman Zimba, he has orchestrated a number of attacks against senior government officials, especially ministers. Some of them have even been fired. Based on Kachepa, based on Kachepa, nothing but Kachepa. This is true. And don't say no, Tayari, this. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. It's true. And it's not good. So many things were orchestrated against Taruchirufia. No, Taruchirufia is fighting, uh, fighting, uh, fighting President Ed Galungu. Taruchirufia is fighting President Ed Galungu. I used to be with Taruchirufia. And several times I asked him, I investigated him, checked around him to see if indeed he was, he was uh, uh, trying to fight President Ed Galungu. I saw nothing of that. I saw nothing of that. But you, Chris Zuman Zimba, orchestrated, orchestrated the attacks on Chirufia in all France. In all France, I'm not going to go in details. In all France, Stalu Chirufia was busy pointing at pointing at uh, Chitotela. No, Chitotela this, Chitotela this. I can assure you, at, from what I know, Chitotela was innocent. The kachepa, the problem is Chris Zumanizimba. That is the kase, that is the kachepa. I'm telling you, Kaiza Zulu had his own problems. Kaiza Zulu had his own problems. But we never had this nonsense that is going on right now. We didn't have that. Kaiza Zulu, the other thing is that he used to confront people. He used to use, of course, his rough way. He would go with a gun and threaten you. Even me, Kaiza Zulu threatened me with a gun. Iwenka Kushuta insulting you. You are doing this, you are doing this, you are doing this. I think that is better than a Kachepa who is going, who is going, who is, you know, orchestrating things, using the investigative wings, using the police to fight people on just based on rumor mongering. I don't understand where you even get that information. Because most of the things that you, you, you do, they are actually not true. I strongly believe this is the same fate that I've suffered. I'm sure something was said that Tyler is doing this and that and that and that. And yet I was innocent. I was innocent. I've been very straight. I've been negotiating with you people. But all of a sudden this came up. But the issue is, we like to say, no, President Ed Galungu is okay. If the problem is those people who surround him. No, it is President Ed Galungu himself. Me, I refuse that to say, no, it's President Ed Galungu. It's the people around him. Because President Ed Galungu, he's the one that appoints these people. He's the one who is fed with this kind of information. Why doesn't he, you know, do any, a due diligence of everything that is being told than just signing to say, yes, Go ahead, Kevin Nankan and so forth to uh, organize the uh, Abashirika to arrest that guy or to do this and that. That is not good leadership, in my view. A leader must be able to confront people, he must be able to find out what is going on, not to act on mere rumors. The only thing that President Edgar Rungu doesn't act on is about corruption when it comes to corruption then he wants evidence when you talk about corruption then he says no 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 i want evidence bring evidence bring evidence but when you talk about no this one wants to fight you then president Ed will act now even if these people 
are aspiring for presidency. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? I'm not saying they are, but even if they were aspiring for presidency, what is wrong with that? Why should people who are aspiring to be presidents be arrested? Why should the investigative wings be unleashed on all people who want to become president? And this I say, including Haka Inde Ishilema. The best way President Edgar Lungu seems to understand better to, to fight those who are aspiring to be president is to throw the police at them. But what kind of leadership is that? What kind of leadership is that? That is being a dictator. And you know dictators are people who are insecure. Dictators are people who are insecure. And President Edgar Lungu, he's insecure. I know a PF you will not want to hear this, but President Edgar Lungu, he's one of the most insecure presidents that we have had. And those who are around him, they know better, they know his weakness. His weakness is to tell him, to say that one is fighting you. That one wants your position. Then he will give you attention. And all the system of government will be on that person. It is insecurity. It is insecurity. We cannot have a leader that is so insecure and say he's a good leader and say he's a democrat. No. Dictators most of the times are those who are insecure. Those are dictators. They can be as humble as President Edgar Lungu appears. But by the fact that, by the fact that they're insecure and they're using state resources to fight those who aspire to be presidents, that is dictatorship. That is dictatorship. A Democrat uses political means uses political means to thwart whatever opposition that he, uh, he wants to, uh, to quench. You use political means. You engage. That is political means. Engage a person. You don't send the police. And when you have Eka Chepa as part of your as part of your uh, your advisors it even makes things worse. Chris Zumanizimba is really a big mistake in President Edgar Lungu. And he's not building President Edgar Lungu. He's actually destroying President Edgar Lungu. Chris is not building President Edgar Lungu. He's destroying him. And if you are looking for evidence of that, here I am. If you are looking for evidence, here I am. Because... Had it not been for people like Chris Zumanizimba, I would not be saying these things that I'm saying today. I am saying this because I have been mishandled. I've been mishandled. Chris, it's not out of my volition that I'm saying these things. I was provoked. I was, have been left with no option but to do this. It's not me who has failed. It's you who have failed. It's not me. You have failed. And you are doing this a few months before elections. Two months before elections. That's when you are doing this. What kind of an advisor? Go and mess up with one of the operatives. Two months before elections. What kind of a advisor is that? The best would have been a political solution. If indeed you saw that I'm not, uh, I'm doing something wrong, you would have used a political solution. That's what you would have used. But you used wrong means because you are insecure. Because you are lacking in political strategies. This is lacking in political strategies. 
I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. Adoptions have gone, have gone, have, have, have just passed. A number of candidates have been left out. Some of the candidates have been left out on the pretext that these people have got ambitions. These people are not with President Ed Galungu. That's why some of these people have been left out. A number of candidates have been left out on the pretext that they are not with President Ed Galungu. It doesn't matter whether this person is liked by the people on the ground. As long as this person pledges allegiance to President Ed Galungu, then he should be adopted. I know one of uh, the ministers has been left out because he has been frequenting a uh, Rupia Banda. But this minister, this minister appreciates Rupia Banda. Rupia Banda is a man that made him. How do you leave him because he's going to see Rupia Banda? Do you think Rupia Banda wants to come back as president? He has said it that, no, I'm done. So why are you getting agitated over the old man? The old man, he doesn't want, he's not interested in politics anymore. So why are you intimidating people who are going to visit him? Why leave a person out of the parliamentary race because he's associating himself too much with Rupia Banda? Why do that? You have left out Dixon Jerry. Because Dixon Jerry is, is being perceived to be close to Rupia Banda. Why? I mean, you have left out a, a very good man. I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy for, 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 for Mao Samp. I'm happy for Mao Samp. But the point I'm talking about here is this, this insecurity... This insecurity that has obsessed, that has obsessed the people around President Edgar Lungu and Edgar Lungu himself is what I don't understand. You think you are building yourself, you are destroying yourself. Eastern province, you have messed up big time. Eastern province, you have messed up. You have removed uh, Vincent, Vincent, Vincent Mwale. You have messed up. I can assure you the guy that you have put there in the pretext that he's more loyal to President Edgar Lungu, will not give you as many votes as uh, 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 Tuan Kane would give you. You have left out Moses Moyo. Moses Moyo, I mean, one of the traditional leaders, a high traditional leaders, was talking about him, that this is the person that we want. They phoned me, phoned me directly. The day you arrested me, that's the day they phoned me. You have left him out. In preference of the so-called those who are loyal to President Edgar Lung. You have messed up Eastern Province. You are going to get more votes in Eastern Province. But you are not going to get as much as you would have gotten. Yes, you will get votes there. But you will not get as much as you would have done. If you had put right people there. But you have been, you know, sidelining people in a pretext that they are not loyal to President Ed Galung. This insecurity is, is not helping you. It's killing you. But you know, I understand somehow. I understand somehow. I understand somehow this insecurity. This insecurity is arising from the fact that President Edgar Lungu knows that he's not eligible. And you guys around President Edgar Lungu, you know he's not eligible. Chris Zuman Zimba, you know he's not eligible. Lukangaba, you know President Edgar Lungu is not eligible. You know that. You know. You know. You know. That is, that is all I'm, I'm saying. You know that he's not eligible. President Edgar Lungu is not eligible. And you know, 
These things, what makes me, I mean, I know some people will say, why are you talking about this? All along you have been saying, eh, Edgar Lungu is eligible and everything and everything. Trust me, I asked myself a moral question. I said, okay, you know, some people came to see me and really went through the constitution and so on and so forth and whatever, whatever, whatever. And at the end of the day, I asked myself a moral question. Okay, if President Ed Galungu doesn't qualify because uh, he finished a term, Yawa, Yawa Sata, what moral evil am I doing? I didn't find anything. And I said, well, it's okay. I'll go with it. I'll go with it. I'll support him if he's a good leader. Because really for me, if a person is a good leader, the constitution I don't it's it's not it's it's a question is made for people okay but from what from what is going on from what is going on i am very worried i am very worried that president edgar lungu should continue i'm very worried i'm sorry i am worried now i am not saying don't vote for edgar lungu if president edgar lungu will be on the ballot so be it that is not my fight now. That is not my fight. President Edgar Lungu's whatever is not my fight. But I'm only expressing myself. And I'm telling you that I knew this after some people went through a number of provisions with me. They went through a number of provisions with me. And I am convinced that President Edgar Lungu is not eligible. But I ask myself a moral question to say, if he's a good leader, why shouldn't he continue? But with what is happening, with what I've even myself gone through, I am worried. The desperation is too much. President Edgar Lung, when he became a leader, he was a humble man. And that's why God chose him. That's why God chose him. But... He has tested power and power has become so sweet. Power has become so sweet and is now obsessed with power and he wants to keep it at all costs, even when he knows that he's not eligible. Now, some people will be wondering to say, what do I mean? Let me, it's a pity I don't have my laptop, but he sent the laptop. So I don't have the constitution. I would have read the constitution, but... When you go back in the old constitution, President Edgar Lungu was elected in the last in the in the old constitution. Okay? President Edgar Lungu, the first term, he did it in the first in the uh, old constitution. A lot of you have been arguing about a term in relation to the new constitution. Uh-uh. That is a mistake. That is a mistake. If you want to talk about President Edgar Lungu's first term, you need to look into the old constitution. What does the old constitution say? You don't have to bring in the new constitution. Uh -uh. And you have been lying. We have been peddling, including myself. We have been peddling this propaganda that no, the concord has ruled, the concord has ruled. The concord has not ruled on President Edgar Lungu's eligibility president edgar lungu's eligibility what they have been talking about they have been interpreting what a term means according to the new constitution but when you talk about president edgar lungu's first term first you need to suspend the new constitution you need to suspend the new constitution you don't have to talk about the new constitution first of all the mistake that a lot of people have been making, they have been talking about the eligibility of President Edgar Lungu according to the new constitution. Ah, 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 ah. Forget the new constitution. First talk about the old constitution because President Edgar Lungu was elected in the old constitution. So the provisions and the interpretation of the term must be looked according to the old constitution. That's why you, have, you need to look. Not the new constitution. 
The old constitution, what did the old constitution say in terms of the term? The old constitution said, once you are elected, once you are elected, whether you have been elected for two days, for three days, that's it. That's it. There is no interpretation of the term and so on. Uh -uh, there is no interpretation, nothing. The moment you are sworn in, that's it. Takwadi, old constitution, takwadi, if you are your three years, Ishan Nation, takwadi. The only time that you talk about how long you have been there, it is when you are talking about benefits. But in terms of being sworn in, you could be a president in for a day, just for a day. You could be a president just for a day. And it was counted, it counted as a term in the old constitution. It counted a term in the old constitution. And President Edgar Lungu in 20. 16 when he entered into state house what was there was the old constitution so the moment president edgar lungu entered into state house it counted as a term full stop you don't have to start talking oh how long was he there no, uh, 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 nothing the moment he entered food that is it whether that was good or bad that is another matter that was if you that was good or bad that is another matter or in other words that is what was resolved in the new constitution it was resolved in the new constitution where now we brought in the vice president and we brought in the issue of you know three years in to define a term but in the court constitution where president edgar lungu came in there was nothing like that. There was no definition. So the moment President Edgar Lungu entered the state house, it counted. It was a full term. When he brought in the new constitution, when he signed that new constitution, it did not apply to him when he entered the state house for the first time. It applied to him for the second time. After 2016, that's when it applied to him. I can give you an example which somebody gave me. He said, suppose Vatari, suppose you have you marry a girl who is 18 years old because the constitution allows. Eh? Today I marry somebody who is 18 years old, and the constitution allows it. No problem. Then, two days later, the constitution has changes that no, you can't marry a girl who is 18 years old. You can only marry a girl who is 21 years old. Can the law enforcers come and arrest me? Can they do that? Can they do that? That no, you, you have got an 18-year-old girl. The constitution number nine is ginger. So you are going to be arrested when I'm already married. It can't happen. It can't happen. These things I'm saying, President Edgar Lungu knows, Chris Zumanzimba knows, Lukangava knows, and a number of PF senior government officials, they know this. But they are scared to confront President Edgar Lungu because if they do that, then they are in problems. Then they will go to jail. President Edgar Lungu knows this. He knows. You came in the old constitution and the old constitution does not talk about it. You know, 18 months, 13 months, it doesn't talk about, it just says the moment you enter state house, chapwa. So, John Sangwa is on firm ground when he says he's going to petition President Edgar Lungu. The moment he falls in, he's on firm ground. And if indeed the judiciary will be fair, if indeed the judiciary will be fair and courageous 
not like some of these senior government officials who are scared they will declare President Ed Galungu eligible. Eh? In ineligible. What is it? Ineligible. Uh, not eligible. They will declare him not eligible because what applies to him, it's the old constitution. Don't bring in the new constitution. If anything, we can even accuse President Ed Galungu that he brought in the new constitution so that he can prolong his stay in office. But I don't want to go there. I believe he genuinely did that. I believe he genuinely did that. But unfortunately, he cannot benefit out of that. What applies to President Ed Galungu? Share this. Cut this speech. What applies to President Ed Galungu? It's the old constitution, not the new constitution. If you want to understand, if you want to, to, to understand whether President Ed Galungu is eligible, Look, first of all, in the new constitution. It's a contract. I can take another example. If you employ somebody today and say your salary will be 30,000 30, 30, kwacha, and then tomorrow you employ another person and you change the rules, the rules to say whoever is coming uh, will be getting 60,000 60, kwacha. This other person cannot claim to say, ah, uh -uh, even me, my salary has changed. No, your contract, the contract of President Ed Galungu is in the old constitution. Why are you looking in the new constitution? Contract Yawa Lungu in the first term is in the old constitution. Read the old constitution. What does it say? That is what applies to President Ed Galungu. The one that you are discussing, the new constitution, it doesn't apply to him. It applies to him in his second term is not eligible is not eligible didn't i know this i knew it and i was thinking these guys are good guys president ed Garung is a good guy but he's not a good guy he's not he's not he's not he's not if he was a good guy he wouldn't treat me like this and this you have brought on yourselves. Don't blame me. You have brought it on yourselves. You have brought it on yourselves. John Sangwa, I encourage you to go to court so that at the end of the day, to come on. And I can only encourage the judiciary to be fair, to read the old constitution. What does it say? What does it say? Does it talk about three years? The contract that President Ed Galungu signed in the first term, does it talk about three years? It doesn't. The moment you enter State House, finish. And uh, this man, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Elias Chipimu. He clearly explained that. Imwewa media, mwewa letamba. Go back to John, to Elias Chipimu. Reproduce what Elias Chipimu said you will see that it is agreeing with what I'm saying here. It is agreeing. President Ed Galungu doesn't, is not eligible. And, and this is why it is causing this, this frustration and this insecurity. This all insecurity is because President Ed Galungu is not eligible. But PF, you don't have a candidate. It's high time you sit down and start looking around amongst yourselves who can take over from President Ed Galungu. Because when John Sangwa petitions, I don't think the court, unless Katwish court, you know, I don't know. But if the court will just be fair, it is very clear, very clear. There is no two ways about it. That man doesn't qualify. His contract is in the old constitution. That's where his contract is. The concord ruled on the new constitution. And the concord has been very, 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 very careful. They have always refused to use the word eligible. Even in this, in this uh, petition, the last petition, you were saying 
eh, here kwa Kapalasa. At no, the court has ruled that is eligible. They never use the word eligible, never. They have never used the word eligible. Why has the court not used the word eligible? They have never used it. It is only when, when President Edgar Lungu will put in a petition and then John Sangwa will lift that petition and go to court and ask them, is this person eligible? How can they say he's eligible? They can't. But the day that he will push in the petition, he, John Sangwa will lift that and go to court and ask, is this man eligible? Because he entered in the old constitution. In the old constitution. And in the old constitution, there was no definition of three years. It was when the moment you are swearing, deal, that's it. He would have been there for two days. It doesn't matter. In the old constitution. So stop reading the new constitution when you are talking about the first term of President Edgar Lungu. Because the contract... Yawa Lungu is not in the new constitution. The contract Yawa Lungu is in the old constitution. Read the old constitution. What does it say? What does it say? It doesn't talk about three years. The moment you are sworn in, it's a full term. That's it. That's it. So Walungu doesn't qualify. And it justifies why they are being so apprehensive and so insecure even attacking people that are innocent but this one you touched on a wrong guy you touched on the wrong guy at a wrong time you touched chris you touched on the wrong guy you touched on the wrong guy this, you don't do that you don't do that i've done a lot for you guys I've done a lot for you guys. You can't just come and pick me up and throw me myself for having a done nothing. For things that you know that what I'm talking about is true. Tienayo, Tienayo, Tienayo. Let's go to the magistrate. Let's go. I am I am I am resolved. Ngakufuila ponka fuila po. Me I'm resolved. Now you can come and pick me even now. You can come and pick me. I'm at home. If you want to come and pick me, throw me in my cells, I don't mind. You can even starve me to death. I don't mind. I will die for the truth. I will die for the truth. A lot of people are telling me, no, don't talk. No, uh, lay, low profile and so on and so forth. Mm -mm. In an arikana, if you. In an arikana. What is wrong is wrong and I must say it. Whether you like me, you hate me, that's your problem. But I speak my mind and I've said it here. I've given you some of the problems that are in State House. Number one, I have said the people that are around, the man that, are, you know, you must say, I mean, I want to appreciate Bamiti. Dr. Miti has really brought, uh, you know, sanity in State House. I wish we had the caliber of, of Dr. Miti among the people around there. Unfortunately, we only have one good man in State House. That is Dr. Meat. The rest of these guys, they are not helping President Edgar Lungu. I mean, I don't know what the man does. Eh? They don't offer counsel to President Edgar Lungu. They don't offer counsel at all. They don't offer counsel. Lukanga wat liko liko whatever liko personal liko whatever whatever. You know these things. You know these things. You guys have cheapened the state house. You have cheapened the president presidency. Chris, wavika pono mana na na ruma mongari. Fiat fiat penene na. Things have just gone crazy. Things have just gone crazy. It's a pity, really. It's a pity. Me, you have Balungu Nalibatemwa. To be honest, Nalibatemwa, I like that man. But, you know, we can't, we can't be subscribing to this kind of thing. We can't be. Even my family, would, would, they are looking at me to say, what kind of a man is this? Eh? What kind of a man is this? We have been protecting you. We have been defending you. 
But we, the very people, me who has been defending you, I'm the person that you turn around and, and strike. And you still want me to be worshipping you. No. Nakana-san. Nakana-san. President Edgar Lungu is not eligible. And the PF, I, for, I forewarn you. They say forewarned is for armed. President Edgar Lungu doesn't qualify. You can use your Kada mentality. You can refuse to think. But today, Finenderanda, Muwule, get the old constitution, Muwelenge. Get the old constitution, Muwelenge, because that's where his contract is. That's where his terms of reference is. The terms of reference of President Edgar Lungu are in the old constitution. Don't read the new constitution first. Read the old constitution. Muwelenge wa PF, Vamdala wa Davis Mwina. I respect you so much. I respect you so much. Very again, old constitution, Ilelan Dachan. Given Rubinda, we have had our differences. You were a justice minister. I know you know. He doesn't, he's not eligible. I know you know. I know you know. You are a very intelligent man. I know you. We used to sit, I used to sit with you. I know how intelligent you are. I know you agree with me. President Ed Galungu is not eligible. Step up, PF. Why are you so scared of one man? Na mika tila kuchinge kwa kaba wonse fe. Mulifye mule tina tina fe. Mule mutina fe President Ed Galungu. Ah ah. President Ed Galungu was brought in by people. That office does not belong to one man. That office belongs to anyone. And it can go to anyone including HH. I am not campaigning for HH. I'm not campaigning for HH. But I'm saying it belongs to anyone. Including HH. Including HH. So, you know, everyone who wants to be one, we shouldn't criminalize HH. We shouldn't criminalize him. And label him into tribalism and everything. No. He's a Zambian. He's entitled. Anyone can be in that state house. That state house does not belong to President Ed Galungu. He doesn't belong to President Ed Galungu. So, like, can you let's apply what is in the law. And we are not, we have not run out of leaders. We have not run out of leaders. We can't say, no, Ed Galungu is the only one that can lead us. No. There are a lot of competent people that can lead. Even given Luminda can lead this country far much better. Far much better because I know him. I'm not again. We do, we don't send police officers to, to given Luminda. Uh -uh. Don't send police officers to given Luminda. He's innocent. I'm just saying this. I don't even talk to the man. But I'm just appreciating the intelligence that that man has. There are so many other people that can rule this country. There are so many other people that can rule this country. Why is President Edgar Lungu so obsessed that presidency was given to him on a silver platter? On a silver platter. Bound for power and and Bafulungan Avalungu. Bafulungan. He doesn't want to let go. You know you are not eligible. You know you are not eligible. I don't want to go into the details of the machinations that are behind. I don't want to go into that. I don't want to go into that. At least I'm leaving you that far. At least I'm leaving you there. But, President Edgar Lungu, you know you are not eligible. Your contract, the first contract that you signed with the Zambian people does not talk about three years. It talks about being sworn in, finish. The new contract that you signed is the one that talks about three years. But you have done five years. So we cannot even talk about three years. So two terms, common. Mwitu shupa. Mutampo kula tuikata ikata. Chawana tire, chawana tire. Mutu ipaile pono kutu ipaile po. Ufuwa fe kwa ti mkonka nyepo kuteka. Yo! Tefo chifuro kuba yo. Tefo chifuro kuba. Ubu tungurushi kuchinja na. Kuchinja na ubu tungurushi. You exchange. Uyateka kwa uyateka kwa uyateka kwa uyateka kwa Not now we cut it off here. Wamba no kula tuka kila kwa. Tefo chifilo kuba. You even start sidelining people. Uya ala bimu leta sideline. You have left people 
who belong who are close to Fred to to Arabi. Be you have left them out. That is the man that helped you. You wouldn't have won 2015 general election. And 2016, you wouldn't have won it. You won it because of Arabi. Lero Arabi Akwatefibash. Akwatefibash. Whoever associates with Arabi, you want to sideline them. Because of insecurity. Why Shmuletina Arabi? Why are you excluding people that uh, are, are, close, are close to Arabi? You did the same thing in 2016. When you excluded people who were close to Sat. It is not good. It is not good. Don't be obsessed with power. Don't be obsessed with power. Power belongs to all of us. This is what I wanted to say on that. President Edgar Lungu, he is very obsessed of, of, of presidency. And this is why he's arresting all of us. I wanted to contest on the presidential on the on the presidential ballot. I wanted to be or to be among them, but you 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 disenfranchised me. I was in the cells when I was supposed to be looking for money to pay for my presidential nomination. However, I am going for mayor. I want to appeal. This is now an appeal to all of you who are watching. I want to appeal to you that please consider me for the position of mayor of Lusaka. I am going for the position of mayor of Lusaka. Last time when I tried, you calculatively eliminated me. This time around, I am making sure that I'm not eliminated. I've already paid, I've already paid I verified my grade 12 certificate. Tomorrow I'm getting the forms at the civic center. I want to make sure that I'm on the ballot. And I'm praying, I am praying that you people of Lusaka, and even you who are not in Lusaka, you will encourage people who are in Lusaka to vote for me as mayor. You see, one of my problems, one of my problems has been sustainability. You know, it's not easy. I'm, I'm a businessman. And where I'm coming from, I used to run business quite all right. But since I joined politics, it has been very difficult for me, you know, to make money. It has been very, very difficult. And this is why I end up finding myself being used by the PF. I don't offer the checks and balances as I would. I'm not as effective because I don't want to disturb them. I don't want to rattle them. So I do some of these things to sustain myself. And I'm being very honest with you. If there is any politician that is honest, it's me. I say things as they are and I, and I say everything about me just, just like that. I have done some of these things with the PF because... You know, and you do some of these things really, which if indeed you are so independent, you would actually object. You would actually fight. I am appealing to you people to vote for me as mayor. Employ me. Pay me. Once you pay me, once you give me that employment, I'm telling you, I'll be able to speak for you properly. I'll be able to offer checks and balances properly. Given a stable income, given a life, everything that, uh, you know, not everything, you can't have everything, but at least given, you know, what I need, I can offer checks and balances properly. A new government is coming in. If President Ed Galungu will be on the ballot, and you vote for him, that is up to you. But, but according to me, if the judges will really be fair, President Edgar Lungu will not be on the ballot. If the judges will really be fair, President Edgar Lungu will not be on the ballot. But that is not up to me. I've just expressed my opinion. And if he comes in, if he comes in or whoever will come in, 
you will need a chirufa tayari to offer those checks and balances. But chirufa tayari can offer checks and balances if chirufa tayari has got a stable income. Not where, you know, he's trying to follow this, this one and that one. You know, he's trying to follow Kampiongo. He's trying to follow whoever for him to eat. It is difficult to, comprom to, to offer checks and balances. I tried, uh, you know, I, I, I tried to reach out. To Some people say, no, why don't you work with the Hakainde Ichirema? Why don't you work with UPND? With due respect to Mr. Hakainde Ichirema, I have tried a number of times to reach out to him. But it seems we can't just work together. We can't just work together. Even this time around, I reached out to him. So some of you who are thinking, who are thinking, no, that is defecting to UPND. I am not defecting to UPND. But one thing that I will assure you is that I will not attack Haka Inde Ichirema unnecessarily. And for the time that, I've, uh, that I have uh, uh, attacked him unnecessarily, you know, in trying to protect the PF, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. You won't hear anything of that. You won't hear anything of that. I will respect Haka Inde Ichirema. And, I mean, I will let him do his thing. It's up to you, the Zambian people. If you vote for him, so be it. For, so be it. For me, all I want is, Mumpe de Kofi Wumea. Mumpe de Kofi Wumea. Just give me that position of mayor. And then whoever will come in, I will be able to offer checks and balances whilst working for the people of Lusaka. I will work. And from there, you will judge me what kind of a leader I am. You will judge me because I just talk. Give me an opportunity to be Lusaka mayor and I show you what I can do. In terms of service delivery, in terms of looking at housing, garbage collection, even the road shedding, I'll be going to Zesco and engage Avena Mundende. Avena Mundende, they sit comfortably. Balashmiyama light at will because no one challenges them. No one goes to them. I will be going to them. I will make sure that they offer a good service. All those people who are, who are offering different services to the Lusaka residents, I will make sure they do a good service. We have failed, up to today, we have failed to sort out the issue of vending. I know some of you, in the, some of you who are watching have got shops in the CBD and other places. And you have people who are vending right on your doorsteps. That is not right. I am not saying that I will remove the vendors completely, but we have to come up with a modus operandi where they can work properly. We are going to zone them. I'm going to zone them so that we are one bell up, we are one bell up, we are one bell up, and we will have all of them registered. All of them registered. So that Navena, that is formal employment. A vendor should also be able to go into a bank and borrow money. Because he's registered. And that is what I will work for. They will be respected. Because we will have them registered. Vending is creating a lot of employment. That is for sure. But we need to kind of, you know, formalize it. I'm a market, in a city market, Kale Apia. Na number, it has not been it is not being built. Let me help me come in. Give me that job. I can assure you, before the next election, that market will be built. That market will be built. So give me that position so that mushani na wali. You always call me mushani na wali, mushani na wali. Give me a job. I'm asking to you Zambians. I am contesting. I am sorry to Chilando. I wanted Chilando to go through as mayor. But with the way the PF have treated me. I'm sorry to you Chilando. Madam Chilando. 
I want I was I even started campaigning for you Chilando so that you become mayor of Lusaka under PF but you are PF banchitobubi so nkashiandi mbere lako luse mbere lako luse I am standing against you not against you I'm standing for the people and at the end of the day the people who who decide who becomes a mayor but to you people I'm appealing to you I'm appealing to you whether mudi wa PF I know some of you are not happy with what I've said but fishing can am ever mwe wa PF fishing can am ever inefyo ndanda ndanda fe fishing ka ero ndamira ndilako give me that position as mayor UPND yes I may have done so many things so many wrong things but like, like I've told you bumushani na wali wali shupa give me a position give me that job as a mayor you will see what I will do you will be happy trust me you will be happy you will not regret having had voted for me vote for me as mayor and this is where I am concluding my address tonight. Thank you very much for following. Thank you very much for uh, listening. What I've said here is not out of bitterness. I've just expressed myself. And to my friends, you started this. You started this. I didn't start this. I was with you by PF. You couldn't do that to me. It is not fair. Balungu, I don't hate you. I don't hate you. And I'm even, by the way, I'm even still supporting Tasila Lungu. I will support Tasila Lungu. But, I mean, when something is wrong, we need to speak out. And in terms of your eligibility, I can, wish, I can only wish you all the best. But as far as I'm concerned, you are not eligible. Because your contract is in the old constitution. And the old constitution does not talk about a term. It just talks about being sworn in. Have a good night.